coming through the gate was a, a really remarkable experience because we were starting a brand new system and these eager young fellas, 15 to 16 and a half, were coming in to embark on a life in the Navy. And they, uh, we had a one year to train them, get them imbued with the Navy system. And we were all young and keen and we went about it very hard. Mum and Dad dropped me off and uh, jumped on the, we jumped on the bus. And I found all the, the sailors, they were so nice to us. They, they you know, this way gentlemen on the bus and then we pulled into, uh, we pulled into Lewin and they told us what was going to happen in the next few days. Um, they, you know, this is, you know, you'll be getting uh, haircuts, you'll be getting your uniforms and all that. And then we, the last thing I remember, the last thing we did was um, swear on the Bible. You know, the, we took the oath and swore on the Bible. And as soon as we finished that, that was it. The, the, their whole attitude changed. They said, right, you buggers, get out on the road and hurry up. And they started yelling and shouting at us. And we are what the hell's going on? Yep, we made life tough for them because that's what the Navy was and so on. And there was a a lot of parade ground and a lot of regimentation and discipline. You arrived late at night and you, you know, you had given some horrific cold cup of cocoa and then you were sent to bed, got to bed about 2am and then about three hours later it started and you, you realised that life had changed fairly dramatically. But they took it well as youngsters do and they all benefited from it and they didn't think so at the time, but they did, and they recognise it now. And to come back and greet them 50 years later and see what a marvellous success they've made of their lives. The idea of getting guys when they were 15, particularly guys who had academic potential, before they actually had a chance to do matriculation, have all these options open to them, it was a smart scheme. Um, so you got these smart guys and, and, and those who enjoyed it and who grasped the opportunities went on to do big things. I drove in today in the bus, it was the first time since 1971 when I drove through the gate and everything just flooded straight back. The joy, anticipation, excitement, um, the unknown. Just walking around Lewin today and uh, just it brought back lots of memories and, and uh, it, it's my birthday today and, and uh, my wife rang me to wish me a happy birthday from uh, in Sydney. And, she said, what are you doing? I said, look, I'm just um, looking at where I grew up. This is, where, this is where I started my life, and that's exactly how it felt.
we turn up for the meet and greet and I think the first thing that, that, that you noticed was the number of people there. It was just incredible. Um, we all expected a few to turn up but, but nothing like that. It was just amazing. Um, the number of people that you bump into that you hadn't seen for 40 years and you're suddenly talking to them as if you hadn't seen them since yesterday. And that's one of the things about being a JR. You, the, the camaraderie that you established back in, in 71, uh, it just doesn't die out. If anything, it gets stronger. Go and start talking, Will. No, 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 this is, this, this is Bruce Chalamet. <laughs> this is Captain, Lieutenant Commander Golding. <laughs> well, we were uh, 1965 then, Morris, division. Morris Division. The worst division ever. Happy to be here. Enjoying it, uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of old friends, and we have seen a lot of old friends. And uh, look at these motley bunch of crew. Oh, hey, they're wonderful guys. Hey, now look at look at this look. It's this expression of interest. Hey, you'd pay money to see this anywhere else. Excellent stuff. Oh, it's going a bit crazy. There's uh, 3,000 people hit us at once. They were queued up here two hours before we even got the show on the road, so we had to shut the doors to keep them out. Um, and then when we opened the doors, they, they just hit us from everywhere. Good, everyone's in good humour, no, uh, no one's cranky. Apparently the queue goes right around the building and uh, they're all cheerful and happy to be here, all full of expectation and excitement. Um, so yeah, it's going well. I'm looking forward to getting a coffee break though. And uh, Terry Reid, second intake. Uh, it was Kyber Division, and uh, I belong to the RANCB communications uh, group. And uh, we found out well, was via that, I think, the internet and the reunions that it was on. And uh, being the, when our 50th is up in January, so it was a great, great chance to uh, get here and catch up with a few of the guys. I'm uh, Peter Knight, and this is my wife Diane, and uh, we've been uh, looking up, looking forward to this for many years, uh, 50 years to be exact, being a first intake, and um, Diane is looking forward to this also. Yes, yes, it's wonderful. Yeah, I think uh, the work that's gone into it, absolutely fantastic. And we've had a few people, or quite a few people, come up and say what a job that's, you know, that's been done and held here, the work that's gone into it. And yeah, it's lovely to see people coming up and recognising each other, haven't seen for years. For 50 fantastic. years, some of them. Yeah, yeah, and catching up and uh, looking through their goodie bags, what they've got. Oh, it's it's a great feeling to see. And going in there and uh, yeah, going to have a great Meeting time. Meeting old friends. Yes, yeah. Alec McCowan. I'm on the uh, Mark Morrow 46th intake, and uh, it's just fantastic to be here. We've got uh, guys from, a, I've met a fellow on the 4th intake to the, the 80th, so it's been fantastic catching up and seeing what everybody's doing. Uh, my name's Dave Adams, and I uh, was in the Mark's 46th intake in January 1974. Um, I did nine years, served on uh, Patano, Tobruk, uh, Stewart, and Torrance. So yeah, had a great time and I'll do it all again tomorrow. Chris Power, Max 46. There you go, you got me signature, alright? You have a good day. I joined 5th uh, Intake, 1962, and uh, I think it was the start of a, a great life and a great career for me. So uh, I could recommend it, but I don't think the uh, um, people will allow it these days, but uh, certainly made something out of me. A boy from the country, getting out there, getting in with amongst of another 120 guys, and uh, uh, we just had a ball. From the minute I think the minute we joined to the minute we left the establishment, we just had a ball. Uh, my name is Bob Chad. Uh, I was in the third intake. Um, uh, 8th of July 1961, um, got, I did my 12 years and got out of the Navy after the 12. Um, I have no regrets of the Navy time, it was just fabulous and uh, was a hell of an assistance in my uh, later career in uh, the Merchant Marine. Oh, right. Of course. 
How are you? I would have never recognised you. Oh, no, I wouldn't recognise you either. Davina. Hello, Davina. How are you? Nice to meet you. Robert J. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 We're also on TV because we're just met again. Oh. Hi, um, my name is Peter Ablett. I was the second intake, joined in uh, January 1961, and uh, I thought it was a bit hard. I lived on a farm, I'm a bit of a cowboy, I suppose you want to call it, and uh, joined the Navy was a little bit hard for me, but I uh, got through it and uh, looked back at my, my last uh, 20 years down in the Navy, and uh, everything was good. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a good good job. Yeah. What about this week? What do you think of the week? Oh, this week I think it's excellent. It's well planned, and uh, yeah, it's uh, good to get together and uh, a lot of mates there. I mean, I haven't seen some of them for about 49 years, so uh, it's really really good uh, to to get to know and get back and talk about old times. Oh so. yeah, we joined uh, we joined the navy on the first of January 1968. And we were the 22nd intake at HMAS Lewin. Um, we were only 15 and a half or 16, so we were only boys. And uh, like, the, like the storms opened up on our heads in discipline and um, everything, but we loved it. It was really good. We made a lot of good lifelong friends. And as you can see, we're here today with our friends, our wives, and um, this, this is a, a brilliant setup. We're really enjoying it, catching up with all our mates and uh, memories and things we really shouldn't talk about either, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, my partner, husband is Rodney Priceback and I met him when he was 15 and a half just before he joined the Navy. He went away to join the Navy and we kept friends for the six and a half years and then we ended up getting married. So he was, we were married while he was in the service for a little while and that was, then he got out. So I've known him all those years. But we're here with our friends and their, and their wives we're all having a great time. Yes, I'm, I'm Jim Berridge. I uh, joined up at the first intake of January Preach in 1960. Uh, I'm originally from northern New South Wales and uh, I finished up doing 20 years with Navy. Uh, my first impressions were that uh, although things were tough and we're only 15 and a half, that uh, um, Navy was my life and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the 12 months that I spent at Lewin. Uh, Phil Jackson, 34th intake. Um, yeah, it's looking like a really good day here. There's a lot of people here and we're all out to have a good time. Hi, oh, g'day, I'm Des Reid. Um, uh, I wasn't a junior recruit, I was a driver at Lewin between 66 until 69 and then went, went back as a coxswain in uh, in about 72 to about 75, so I watch all of the intakes uh, go through Lewin and I know a lot of the junior recruits, so I thought I'd come along and, and share the old times with them. It's good to catch up with a hell of a lot of these guys. Jerry Walsh from the, the 40th intake, Dave Anderson, come over land by caravan from the top of Queensland. I rode over on a bike from, from Melbourne, I believe. <laughs> no, very pleased to be here, uh, 38 years later, this month since we joined at Lewin. We've got the original cruise book from that uh, 40th intake. It's the small bottle is the musket, um, the large bottle is the port for the uh, all 50th anniversary stuff. All prepaid, there may be some left afterwards, um, first in best dressed. Enjoyed it all, it was good fun. G'day, uh, yeah, my name's Jason Lynch. Um, I, I wasn't a JR, but um, my dad here was. He's, he was in the second intake, January 61. I was the good, and, um, I'm the good looking one. He was the good looking one, yes. My name's Keith Murrell. I joined um, on the 7th of July 1962. It took us five days to get over here by train and um, I think what Lewin did for me was a feeling, as with the Navy itself, a feeling of comradeship and, um, you know, just getting on with people and discipline, I think, was one of the main things that it taught us, was discipline. And how to iron. People's experiences of Lewin were different. You would be a fool to, to think that everybody enjoyed every minute. Some guys had real difficulty getting into it, but 
Um, you know, once you got over that, because you, you did a division, different division officers, divisions, different staff, um, some people did things that you didn't know about. Um, some things good, some things they probably didn't want to talk about at the time, but uh, no, it, 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 you just sit there and, and, and say, well, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't know you were a good sportsman or you, or you had friends and you went off and did this or, or I didn't know you got, you got ill. Or, but but I, to be frank, most of the, the learning you do here that I'm doing here is the things people did after they left. You know, it's a very admirable thing. Well, I've met today a tremendous number of guys who came up to me and told me how now they appreciate what we did for them in terms of training and they understand in a way that they didn't as youths. So the concept for the uh, memorial was created from discussion amongst a, a few ex-junior recruits. And as the momentum for that uh, built, we, we identified quite early in the piece that that would uh, attract uh, reunions from the various intakes uh, at the same time. So. Uh, junior recruit intakes uh, were in the habit of organising re reunions to um, coincide with sig significant events and um, we identified that if we established a celebration or a commemoration for a memorial that others would want to uh, organise reunions around that so that they could uh, come to Western Australia at the same time. A very great honour and personal pleasure uh, for me to have been invited here today to dedicate this memorial. An honour because the memorial recognises the service and sacrifice and, and frankly hard work of over 13,000 fine Australians. A personal pleasure because I was one of that number. When I entered Lewin through the gates just over here in July of 1970, and I know that's uh, well after many of you that are around here, and I'm sure you'll tell me about that a bit later on. Um, I could never have imagined, as Brian said, that I would one day stand here and have the privilege of, of dedicating a memorial to our junior recruit community. But before I dedicate the memorial, I'd like to say something about our junior recruits and their training scheme. Between 1960 and 1984, the Junior Recruit Training Scheme was a very popular avenue for entry into the Royal Australian Navy. The team of Canberra staff officers who developed the Junior Recruit Training Scheme proposal in the late 50s were, in my view, a very cunning mob. They suspected that Australian schoolboys might just find the opportunity to leave school and head off to sea a very attractive proposition indeed. They also believed that many Australian parents might be very happy <laughs> to see the back of their teenage sons as they headed off to what parents knew was going to be a regulated and disciplined year uh, under the close supervision of staff of adult officers and sailors. 
Some of the boys certainly found it a bit of a surprise to swap their school uniform for a sailor's uniform and end up sitting behind a desk again, with the sea a long way off over the horizon, figuratively and in some, time, and in some ways quite literally. In the late 50s, the RAN faced uh, an acute staffing crisis, similar to that that we faced in the not too distant past recently. But the junior recruit training scheme was much more than just a means of boosting sailors numbers at a time of acute shortage. While certainly aimed at increasing recruit numbers, it had the much more ambitious goal of over time markedly improving the educational standards of our sailors to ensure that the Navy could operate and maintain a range of technologically advanced and more complex equipment being introduced into service in the early 1960s. The Oberon-class submarines, the A4 Skyhawk aircraft, the Charles F. Adams-class destroyers armed with state-of-the-art missiles at the time are just a few examples of the sorts of technology that we were facing in the very near future at that stage. By improving the average standard of education, the Navy planned to use it uh, and to ensure that it had a good supply of chief petty officers and petty officers, particularly those in the technical branches, and later on, its supply of special duty officers. In this regard, the scheme was spectacularly successful. A high portion of former JR stayed in the Navy for many, many years and rose to the highest ranks. Of the just over 13,000 boys who passed through the scheme, 299 transferred to HMAS Narimba for apprenticeship training during or at the end of their JR training. Another 255 boys transferred to officer training during or at the end of their JR training. Many more became officers later, of course, in their careers. Now, the JR scheme differed from the Narimba Apprentice and Creswell Officer Cadet training in that soon after leaving Lewin and Cerberus, many former junior recruits, while still boys of 16 or 17 years of age, experienced active service during confrontation in Malaysia and in the Vietnam War. Later, their colleagues also experienced operations in two Gulf Wars, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and in operations in East Timor, Bougainville, Solomon Islands, and as members of the United Nations forces in activities around the globe. Some former junior recruits will be working in operational areas as I speak to you today, in Afghanistan, in the broader Middle East maritime sphere, and in the broader security operations around the world. The Tengaira and junior recruit training schemes were therefore unique in the history of the Australian Defence Force. It's only under these two schemes that boys or minors were intentionally and lawfully trained for and posted to operational units to take part in active service. Most junior recruits, certainly uh, those who joined in the first decade or so, signed on for 12 years, something that teenagers of the X, Y and current generations might find quite astounding. <laughs> However, it was fairly common in the pre-1970s Australia for young people to commit to a lifelong career while still very young, but committing to 12 years, a 12 year long military career at the age of 15 or 16 was nevertheless, in my view, even at that time, quite remarkable. Lewin was a reflection of the melting pot society of Australia at the time also. I can recall my own intake, having a good smattering of Indigenous Australians, Torres Strait Islanders, recruits from Papua New Guinea, boys born in the United Kingdom, in France, in the Philippines, as well as boys from all socio-economic backgrounds from every corner of Australia. I found the mix to be quite a revelation when certainly when I arrived here. Many former junior recruits regard their time as junior recruits as a defining period in our lives. Very long lasting close friendships developed between junior recruits as a result of their 12 months of close quarter confinement here at the former HMAS Lewin for the majority and an HMAS Cerberus in Victoria for others. 
While many former junior recruits did not serve for long periods, the friendships they made here have been absolutely enduring. The very active reunion activity among junior recruit intakes is testament to that. You'll see former JRs serving in the Royal Australian Navy for many years to come. With the recent changes in the retirement age and owing to our greater dependence on employing reserve members in our Navy, it is possible that former JRs may still be serving in the year 2034. So we're going to be around for a long time. I'd like to acknowledge, of course, all the officers and sailors who spent a period or periods as trainers of the boys here in Lewin and at HMAS Cerberus. Caring for a large number of 15 and 16 year old boys 24 hours a day would not have been an easy task. While I was probably not very appreciative of the attention I received from the training staff in 1970 and 71, I think they did a great job. I can now appreciate how well you did your duty in caring for a large number of boys, not just in working hours, but after normal working hours and in your own time, and particularly those late night parade ground sessions clearly caused by other members of my division. <laughs> you produced some outstanding results. Just look at them now. Look around and you will see the evidence of your hard work. Even though some of us may be showing a little more grey and carrying a few more kilos than we would like, we all remain key members of our broader Navy family. I'd also like to acknowledge the many citizens of Fremantle, Perth and the nearby areas who sponsored junior recruits during their time here at HMAS Lewin. I know that some of you are here today and others will be visited this week by the former junior recruits they took into their homes all those years ago. The Junior Recruit Sponsorship Scheme gave many boys a break from the highly regulated training environment of Lewin and that let them relax in a family environment. I know that the scheme forged many long-term friendships and in quite a few cases marriages between Lewin boys and the daughters of the sponsors' families. <laughs> I think I can say with some certainty that all former junior recruits here today that you were participants in an event in Australian history that was unique, honourable, very successful and most unlikely to ever be repeated. The Navy asked much of you to leave home and family at a very young age, to accept a degree of regulation